Hi Stampers, it's Meg from Loven Stamps for another Loven Stamps studio tour. And I don't know if my little teaser yesterday intrigued you or not, but I asked how a 1948 children's book could affect how much I enjoy stamping today. And the answer is yes. So if you had a guess for what the children's book was, go ahead and uh, leave it in the comments or, or jump in. Um, but uh, the 1948 children's book that I'm talking about is actually one that talks about lessons in time and motion. So if you've ever read Cheaper by the Dozen by Frank Bunker Gilbreth Jr., raise your hand or leave a comment. Not the movie, not, not the one with Steve Martin. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that one, but the original book from 1948. So I read this book when I was a kid and it really stuck with me. And the story, if you're not familiar with it, is about a, a guy who um, has a, a, a whole passel of children. And so it's Frank, Gil Frank Bucker Gilbreth, and his son writes the story about their adventures as kids growing up in this household. And see, he had 12 children, and he used to um, drive along in his car with all these kids and people would say, hey, mister, how come you have so many children? And he would think for a or pretend to think for a second, then he would say, well, because they're cheaper by the dozen, okay? So um, Frank Bunker Gilbreth in real life was a time inefficiency expert. And we're gonna play a game this morning. I'm gonna show you a group of cards and you guys get to guess how they're connected by time and motion and how you can use this time and motion efficiency to make your stamping more enjoyable. Okay, if you're like, oh, this is not for me, stick with me, it's gonna be fun, okay? All right, so here are, and good morning, everybody. <laughs> here are the five cards that I'm gonna show you first. All right, let's see, we got some straight there. Okay, so here are the five cards that I'm gonna show you first. So we have, um, this cute snowman here, which was stamped by the fabulous Mary Poulsen. We have um, this uh, faux buckle card, which I stamped last month as part of my um, plaid paper feature. Uh, we have this pretty uh, floral card by, or floral leaf card by Evie Di Piazza. We have this fun card here. Here's my hint. It's about this, <laughs> uh, which was stamped by Jan McClurg. And then we have these um, gorgeous bells here, which match that, um, the die and the stamp set. And those are by Rachel Chamberlain, um, who is a Loven Samples demonstrator. So um, Rachel's card here is the one that I am going to talk about um, directly. Because have you guessed what connects these cards? I know they're not the same season or stamp set or anything like that. But they are connected by the fact that they have repeated stamping. So each one has one um, stamped image that is repeatedly stamped onto like a background layer. Here, I'll take the Rachel's out of the paper so you can see it better. Onto the background paper or, um, or whatnot. So here is where the time and efficiency come in, right? Or time and motion efficiency come in. Motion, time, efficiency. Anyway. So if I, and I find myself doing this, doing this pretty regularly, and then I stop and I think, oh, I could do that more, I could do that better. So what I would do is I would have my ink and it would be over here, and I'd have my cardstock and it would be here, and I'd be reaching across and stamping and reaching across and stamping, and there'd be like 50 things in between here, and my glue, okay, and I'm reaching around and doing all this crazy stuff. This is really, really, like a subtle way that my enjoyment is decreasing, right? There's mess everywhere, there's things in my way. So it's super helpful to just move those things out of the way and then not have my pad over here, but switch them. Put my pad on this side so that I can really easily and conveniently do my multiple stamping. See how that works? Okay, so Thank you, Frank Bunker Gilbreth, for your lesson in time and efficiency and uh, kind of given us this idea that it's just just more fun to stamp casually and, and um, get your projects set up that way, okay? So first lesson, think about um, repositioning your tools so that you have what you need exactly where you want it and it's really convenient, okay? All right, next lesson. Here's my next example. So I'll scoot these out of the way. What do these two cards have in common? I'll give you a, a second or two to think about them. What do these two cards have in common 
that makes them a great candidate for an, a time and motion efficiency study. Okay, here's the answer. Both of these cards, oh, by the way, so this is the um, Poinsettia Petals card that will be on featured on one of my blog posts uh, today. So you can check later today on Loven Stamps um, blog for that. And it's a Z Fold card. And then this card is actually one um, that is made with a new die set and a new stamp set um, that is available to demonstrators right now on pre-order and will be available for everyone to order uh, starting November 1st. It'll be a limited time and there's a Christmas set and a non-Christmas set. So watch for those curvy verses to come up. Uh, but this is like made for a, a demonstrator card swap, so. Okay, so did you catch on to what is, what is the common element between them? Both of them have stamping that can be accomplished with one ink to stamp, okay? So for example, this guy right here, these are two different uh, stamps. The one says, may your days be merry and bright. And then there's another stamp that is this pretty um, star curve here. And by the way, they're photopolymer, so you can adjust the curve to match whatever you want, which is really fabulous. Okay. Uh, but when I stamp these, I could stamp the stars and then get another block and get the other greeting out and stamp the greeting, or I could put both the greeting and the stars on the same block, ink and stamp at the same time, okay? Do you see how that, that way they're lined up perfectly every time, they're on my block, and especially when you're doing multiples, it makes a really big difference to have both stamps on one block. So let's see what that looks like. Here is the poinsettia card. And here is the stamp set. The two poinsettia um, flowers are separate, but uh, what you can do is you can mount both of them on a single block. So that when I, let's say this is my paper that I'm gonna stamp my poinsettias on, when I go to stamp, I can just ink up this one block here, do, 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 and I can stamp both of them at one time. And then they're all ready. I can go to my Big Shot or my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine and cut them both out at the same time. Okay, so uh, these two cards are both great examples um, of where you can benefit from having two stamps on one block. And uh, often when you have bigger images like this, this is why I love keeping my F size black around because you can put anything on here. Um, you can line up greetings, you can line up all the pieces, you can make really cool background images uh, where the whole background of your card is, is stamped when you have multiple stamps. There are lots of um, good uses for this giant size block, so keep it handy. All right. Um, the other kind of efficiency thing here, which we've talked about just very recently, is the efficiency of having your scrap bin right handy. So you peel the backing off a of stamp conventional, you put it right into your little um, trash container, and you can learn how to make these if you missed it the other day, if you go back and look at the um, one of our other episodes from the Living Stamp Studio Tours. Um, keeping your glue handy, we've talked about this. Keeping your glue tipped up so that the glue is right at the tip, ready to use every time you wanna use it. These are all kinds of lessons about time and motion um, and efficiency that come from Cheaper by the Dozen, which if you, if you can find a copy, it's probably in a used bookstore somewhere. I think you should check it out. Um, one more note about this sort of efficiency thing. It also applies to where you store things. I'll come back up here. So for example, um, if I am, uh, if I always have my emboss, stamp cut and emboss machine in one place, then the best place to store the extra plates and to keep my little pokey tool and my um, dye brush handy is right there next to where I keep my um, cutting emboss machine, right? If I keep the pokey tool in another drawer or another box or in a toolbox somewhere else, then I'm always looking for it when I need it. So think about storing your tools where you're going to use them. See if that is a location that really helps you to just have more enjoyment, right? It's so much easier to just reach out and what you need is right there. So that's the whole point of Living Stamp Studio Tour. So I hope you're finding some helpful things in these. If you have a helpful tip, make sure you leave it in the comments, um, whether it's related to this or a different tip that I've shared or something else entirely. If there's something that you're always struggling with and you can just, it just, just bothers you just a little bit about where it is or how it's stored, leave that too. Maybe we can come up with some solutions together. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. 
Monday will be our next video for studio tours. And on Monday, we're gonna talk about keeping your stamps clean and different stamp cleaners and which ones I like for which purposes and so forth. So all kinds of fun things. I hope you have a great uh, day, great Friday and a great weekend. If you have some craft project that you're planning to do this weekend, uh, share it in the comments. We can all kind of cheer for you and, and be excited to, to hear what you're working on. So. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next week. Happy stamping.